Uh, so to catch up on this month, um, what I've been working on is this finally came in, right? So this is a DNA prep that I ordered quite a while ago, but it finally came in. Um, it's my gene therapy project vector, the DI hack vector. It's, um, it's the one I'm using for the full statin project. Um, except this is a modified version and the subcloning, the, the actual modification was done by Ryan Bailey. Uh, who's been a big help. The FST gene was extracted and GFP gene was put in its place. The nice thing about that is it means I can put it in human cells and I can actually count how many cells have been modified and I can look at their behavior over time, expression over time, things like that. So I'm using it to compare the mini circle to unrecombined plasmid form of this construct, which isn't just a regular plasmid. So it's gonna allow me to evaluate some of those things. My original plan was to use my fluorescent microscope to do that. Um, the fluorescent mi microscope is really nice, has a lot of interesting features. So this is its power supply. Uh, the bulb is actually here, it's a UV bulb. So UV light comes through here goes through here, it actually goes through this piece, like straight through the optics, into here, and then you get another light source here, which this just kind of gives off a regular light, and the UV light comes through here, hits the sample, bounces back off the sample, goes up, gets split here and filtered inside this thing, oh, inside this thing, uh, split for the two eyepieces, and then you can see it. And I'll put in a picture of what it looks like because it's actually really gorgeous. I, I can just get lost looking at uh, even things like just genetically modified E. coli under the fluorescent microscope. A very nice piece of equipment, very elegant uh, piece of machinery, but it's got a problem. So this is not an inverted microscope. The microscope sees from the top down. It's for looking at slides. But when you're doing tissue culture, which ignore the autoclave tape, I'm just trying to keep from dehydrating. So I have 12 volt plates with human cells growing in them. These are HK cells, and I've modified these two wells, well number one and two. And you see the problem. So even when I get them on stage, uh, I could take some of this you know, stuff off the stage and make it a little easier, but the fundamental problem is the cells are on the bottom, and this wants to look from the top and the focal distance is not far. It can only see really short distance away from the lens. So with something like this, it just can't see the bottom. I had to flip it over upside down and then my cells start dying. So that's not a problem if you're willing to scrape cells off and put them in uh, like on a slide or something and they count them that way, but I want to look at their growth curves over time. So I want to be able to check on them, keep growing them, check on them, keep growing them, check on them, keep growing them. And that's where um, you really you want an inverted microscope. Inverted microscopes, this piece is under the bottom, the light source is on top. So what you end up with is the ability to look at the bottom of the plate. And that's really nice. That's what you normally use for tissue culture in, in flasks like this. Now these are genetically modified um, using this. And so if they've been successfully genetically modified, they'll be green and fluorescent. But I don't have an inverted fluorescent microscope. I have a regular fluorescent microscope. The other issue is with a 12 wall plate, the eyepiece doesn't quite fit in it, if you, even if you do take it off and go all the way down. Um, and I have just disassembled flasks to make it work. So the answer to not having an fluor inverted fluorescent microscope is this. And crazily enough, it actually works. So this is the fluorescent microscope. Um, this is the sort of improvised fluorescent microscope here. Another problem with this is this actually uses UV light, which is a really high intensity beam and it gives you a huge amount of detail, which is really nice when you're looking at small things like bacteria. But relatively large cells like these human cells, uh, you don't necessarily need that intensity of light. And that intensity of UV light is actually pretty destructive. So that much UV light damages DNA, damages cells, and it even denatures the GFP protein. So you hit it with that much light um, and the GFP actually stops glowing after a while. So it can throw things off. 
But this thing, as ugly as it is, actually works really, really well. So, blue flashlight, pretty high intensity blue flashlight, regular cheap plastic inverted microscope. You can see the eyepieces are under the bottom, the, the optics are under the bottom. So this up here is just a light. So that just shines light down, but we're not gonna use that light. We're gonna use this blue light. Yeah, I've just taped it on there. So this, is um, UV blocking film. You can get it pretty much anywhere that you make it for like window tinting. And I'm just putting it over the top of the optics under the stage. Let's see, I have to do one handed. Okay, there we go. So now what will happen is the light. Okay, so now the light on, the blue light will shine on the, um, on the cells. <laughs> the blue light will get filtered out here, but the green light being made inside the cells by the GFP fluorescence will still be visible. Let's see if we can catch in here. focus yeah so okay if I move it around on the stage you can see new cells if I turn on this light you can see all the cells it's it's actually pretty confluent I'm gonna turn that off and all you see is the fluorescing cells so just that easy really straightforward. I can watch them, I can look at the percentage of cells that are glowing, um, and I can watch them without killing them, without disturbing them, without uh, hitting them with ionizing radiation, because this is just a blue LED. It actually works really well. Uh, and this is on the lowest magnification. I go up a magnification. Oh, oh. This is where it gets tricky. Kind of tricky to focus, but you can still see it pretty well. You can actually see a surprising amount of detail. These cells. And yeah, it's not as intense. Uh, like if I put them under the fluorescent microscope, you'd actually see uh, more detail and brighter. You can see here's the cells, HEK293 cells. You can see which of them are modified. Um, but yeah, so it's just that simple, um, which I actually found pretty surprising. I, I kind of figured it would be a lot more difficult. Well, I can't get it back in focus. Let's go back to here. Now, to show that it's not just blue light bouncing around. Done. All right, so got this here. Focus. Oh, I don't have it lined up. There we go. Okay, so the cells here. Now, if I pull the filter off. That's what you get, just washed out blue. That's why you need the filter. So the filter's job is to filter out all that blue so that you can see the green without the blue just washing everything out. Now, we can compare this to the next well over. All right, 
right, so here's these cells. Now here's an unmodified well. Okay. Let me see. Make sure it's in focus. It's hard to focus when there's nothing to really see. You can see a couple of reflections, but I'm on the wrong wire. All right, so here's the cells and nothing, All right? So these are unmodified HEK cells, so the, there's really not a lot of background. And then the light. this is modified ones. And you can see density of the culture is really high. But yeah, um, so pretty straightforward. Um, now, when uh, when I do this with the mini circle, uh, I'll be able to graph the amount of expression and expression over time because what I can do is I can passage that. So I can take those cells, um, remove them from the plate, put them in a larger dish, and then continue to grow them. Now, with normal plasmid, what you'll see is in human cells without selection, there's no drug selection, by the way. They don't have pleuromycin resistance or neomycin resistance or anything. It's just an, a CMV vector. Um, but it has um, human chromosomal elements and viral elements designed to make it able to replicate uh, episomally. So if that works correctly, I should be able to just continue to plate this without seeing a significant dilution in the amount of GF, GFP produced over time. A normal plasmid would just fall off. And so what I can do is I can take a human GFP plasmid um, that doesn't have those modifications and see the fall off. I can take the, uh, this vector and hopefully see long-term expression. Um, and then I can take it in its uh, mini circle form uh, where the bacterial elements of the plasmid have been removed and um, check its expression over time. Uh, and that expression may drop dramatically um, or it may be uh, dramatically different. Um, there's a few different elements. So because of the nature of the IP around mini circles, I won't be able to get a commercial prep. So, the, so I'll be prepping it myself. So the overall quality may be lower. Endotoxin levels may be higher, things like that. Um, even though I'll be going for endotoxin removal um, it's just hard to beat the pros, but, um, on top of that, the additional difficulty, um, and time it takes to make mini circles. And so if there's not a significant difference in long-term expression, then there's not really a reason to bother making mini circles. If this vector works equivalently, uh, without that, then I can move on with the FST program without worrying about trying to get the mini circle part right, uh, I can focus on plasma design or, or construct design. Um, and that's gonna be way easier because that's something I can outsource. And that's something that they'll do a really good job at and be really consistent at. And I can get really good, really large, high quality quantity um, preps made that, that I can just immediately use in experiments. I'm kind of hoping it goes that way. If the mini circles make just an insane world of difference, then that's just gonna be what it takes, but we'll find out.